Screening for breast, breast um, cancer involves three things. Uh, there is a self-breast examination, an annual clinical breast examination, and then there is the um, mammogram or ultrasound depending on your age. So we're going to demonstrate how to do a self-breast examination. A self-breast examination uh, basically is you as the person or individual doing a breast examination on yourself. There are two main aspects of the self-breast examination. Um, one involves uh, you inspecting, which is looking for any abnormality, and then you feeling what we call palpating uh, for any unusual breast lumps. So we'll start with the initial inspection. But if I go back a bit, I would want to um, insist on um, each person or individual picking a particular time if you're female, preferably after your menses, when your breasts are less tender or sensitive. That's usually around the first week, seven days or ten days after your last menses. Um, preferably at a time when you're uh, less stressed um, either in the evening while taking a shower or early in the morning and you have no uh, emergencies that you want to uh, go and do. You can do your breast examination in the shower room or in the bedroom. The inspection will involve you looking at the mirror, um, looking at yourself in front of a mirror. So we have a mirror with us today and I'm going to take you through the examination. So. First undress uh, to the top half uh, and then stand in front of the mirror. Hands are kimbo. Uh, try and contract your pectoralis muscles and with that motion, if there's any fix fixation of your breast to the chest, then it tends to move up. If there's no motion, then you're otherwise okay. Then the last motion uh, or the last thing that you can do while looking at yourself is press on the nipple areola complex region and check to see if there's any discharge um, on either of the two breasts. So one side and then both sides. And you'd want to check if the discharge is clear or bloody or if there's any form of greenish discharge. And this can vary. So it's important to know if you're just delivered um, there will be some milk, but if you're otherwise a lady who's not it at her uh, post-pregnancy uh, period, you should have no discharge. Second part of the self-breast examination would um, involve you examining yourself either when you're lying down or in the shower. Some people prefer the shower because um, it's a relaxed state. There is soapy water which allows better motion um, of your hands. So, and then you can do the breast self-breast examination while lying down. So, um, before you lie down, get a pillow. If you're examining the right breast, then it would be preferable to put your hand, the right hand, behind your head. Yeah, so we'll assume there's a hand over here. Place it behind the head and a pillow under your shoulder. That way you have exposed the axilla, which we'll talk about, because there's some breast tissue that extends to the axilla region, which is right below the shoulder, the armpit area, and you can examine that area. The other reason is because we have what we call nodes, which are, um, which when uh, you have breast cancer, there might be invasion of those nodes with the breast cancer. So, Lying down flat, uh, hand on the side to be examined at the back of your head. Um, I prefer or would advise that you start with the tail region, which is under your armpit, first before you go to the entire breast. So at the tail, um, you're using the three middle fingers and you're using the pad of your fingers uh, to apply pressure. So you can apply either um, minimal pressure, uh, soft, um, enough to feel for any bumps, you're looking for any bumps, you're looking for any abnormal lumpy tissue and with the time every month as you do your self-breast examination you get to know and understand what your normal breast tissue is. 
So starting at the armpit area, you will use your left hand if it's the right breast and um, the right hand if it's the left breast. So using the pads of your three fingers, feel at the axilla region under the armpit. You want to feel the inner aspect, which is where the curve of your ribs are coming in. You want to feel the roof of that armpit and um, at some, when we, I'll show you, we can examine the outer aspect of your hand, which also might have lymph nodes. So it's as, um, as a more uh, sensation or palpation while putting pressure. And you make small rotatory movements towards the outer circumference of your breast. Then when you get to the breast, you can either use two methods. There's an up and down method um, I'll take you through it or there's a rotatory method whichever you find comfortable so the up and down method would start right below your clavicle bone you make small rotatory motions all the way from below the clavicle the, the collarbone to under the breast and then once you get under the breast region now move up gradually slowly small rotatory motions all the way to the collarbone and then keep moving laterally uh, next to your last side of uh, feeling and then downwards so it's an up if we could draw up and down motion to cover the entire breast the circular motion would imagine your breast as a clock so all you're doing is making the same rotatory motions with the middle fingers, the part of your middle three fingers around the entire breast, going all the way from the outer circumference of the breast to the region just below the collarbone, and then start drawing to the inner aspect of the breast until you're able to cover to the nipple areola complex, which is that darker region at the nipple area. You want to finish off by expressing using your thumb and your index finger to see if there's any abnormal discharge. And then do the same on the other side. So if it's the left side, place your left hand behind the head, a pillow below your shoulder, you will use your right hand, start at the armpit, the axilla region, feel to the chest wall, which is a medial aspect, at the roof, which we call the apex, and on the lateral aspect, and then using either the up and down motion or the circular motion, palpate the entire breast. With time, if you gradually do this and uh, create a fashion, you'll be able to customize uh, your own self-breast examination. So that's, that's in summary how you do a self-breast examination. Yes. Come on, Dr. Elizabeth Mochiro Bole. Tinye Bichu Chang Seria Notombagi Nei. Come on, Mosiche Ganyesit Enga Sartane Magad. So, breast cancer the reason why we're having very many people present late and we have poor outcomes in africa east africa um, and in africa in general and even in the states or in more developed countries it, the african americans as opposed to you know the asians or the whites have a poorer outcome or higher mortality rate and morbidity mortality meaning death rate because they either present late um, they present at an um, advanced stage, they don't seek treatment early, and in places where they offer trials, the trials are, they give different regimens so that we can find out which is the best cure, there are never people who bring themselves out to get tried with different chemotherapy drugs. So I think more and more, as a country, we want to raise awareness about breast cancer and cancer in general, and that if you come early, you know, and you make a diagnosis early, it is treatable, it is curable. You follow up and you can live a long life 
and um, we can just, you know, break that C word, that cancer word that stigmatizes people. Um, so in general, most of the people who come with breast cancer, worst case scenario, you find ladies who come with wounds, you know, that have eaten up most of their chest, uh, or they come with this lump that was there for many years, a year or two, and now it's become big. So while they would have had a breast conserving surgery, now they end up having a whole mastectomy, and, uh, and they basically feel that there is no hope in life yet there is. Kamu in a dead cole, in a man or a tap corrative and a lymph node serenaton. Chat and Jay was a young guy self breast examination. So, um, the nodes, you know, so we all have lymph nodes in our body and they, they are different lymph node stations. We call them stations in different parts of the body. For breast cancer, the first part or the one that people tend to notice early are the nodes under the armpit, what we call the axillary nodes. That's almost the station or the place where the cancerous cells would tend to go. And once they get there, they now they have access to invade other parts of the body, the blood system. So it's more, um, if you ever have a sore throat or a child gets a small infection, what you tend to feel under the, the jaws. So they are lumpy, they are rubbery, but when they become cancerous and you feel them under the armpits, they tend to be large or even small, but they don't move as much. So they might be fixed to the, to the chest wall. Um, most of the time, if you feel a breast lump, so a lump in the breast tissue itself, and feel a node in the armpits, then that's concerning. But do not make an assumption. Let go and get seen and let the doctors investigate you before you make an assumption that you have advanced disease. You can also have enlarged nodes when you have an infection or if you're breast, breastfeeding, you get an engorgement, breast engorgement, and there's overflow, you tend to feel like you have enlarged lymph nodes. So it's good to examine yourself all the way to the armpit to get a complete picture. But then after that, go and get a clinical exam and then we can do other tests and which will give us a better diagnosis of your underlying condition. So um, if you have, in the event of an underlying cancer, it does not disappear. So that lymph node or that node, let's call it an, a, a node, will be present throughout. It might be attached. You don't see any changes, but with time it might be. Instead of just feeling the one that you felt initially, they might end up becoming two or more and you can't define them so they are stuck to each other but that's more advanced if you ever feel an initial one and you're concerned come as soon as possible do not wait for it to progress and other places that you might have uh, nodes are above the clavicle um, on the same side sometimes you can have on the opposite side but that's different um, breast cancer there are different types and different stages so that would be dependent on where you are katas dr elizabeth kole por rute chemongo enginai ko enga saru ala ko mabunu serianathan nathan ko bagamunu tet meo ke ge kanya inde tia mitem burute breast discharges or nipple discharges that should be worrisome to you is if it's one-sided if it comes out on its in itself so um you're not expressing it just you've changed your brow if you've noticed a stain on the bra or your if it's a man uh, a vest if it's bloody so bloody nipple discharge would be concerning other types of discharges that you could have that are probably hormonal are a watery discharge if it's a lactating mother, milky discharge. If it's a lady who's about the menopausal region, perimenopausal or postmenopausal, greenish discharge. But any discharge should be concerning to a person. But we're not saying that all the discharges are cancerous. We're saying that if you see any discharge, uh, it's one-sided, it comes, it's spontaneous. Uh, it might, there might be pain or there's an associated lump and probably lumpy then, please seek medical attention. Agot ganda naat ni sing seriata kina egonomi kwanyi, kwa imu uchego sich murenik serianata na agot ichere. 
breast cancer, primarily or overly, would be more common in the females than the male. So 1% of all breast cancers would be male breast cancers, and then the rest, a huge percentage, female breast cancer. The female is exposed to um, more hormonal uh, exposure, estrogen state, than the man. So while we both have breast tissue, the male breast tissue is immature, but the female starts developing right when you're pubertal, it starts changing, uh, then your hormones, uh, there's a cycle that, we've, that, that you normally go through monthly. So an estrogen exposed state keeps on changing the breast cells, um, then you get pregnant, or if you don't get pregnant, you are in this state where you have a continuous exposure of estrogen. And we can look at that in the causes, a prolonged exposure of estrogen in itself is a risk factor, not definitive, but one of the risk factors to getting breast cancer. So women will have a higher risk of breast cancer than the males. So globally, 1% of all breast cancers will be male and then the rest will be, females will have a higher rate of getting breast cancer. In BOMET, um, there isn't a specific number. I would say uh, most patients present late. Most patients have either been seen peripherally and sent home or treated because they thought it was an infection. And when they present, they present when it's pretty advanced. By and large, we're just trying to demystify or sensitize women to come early and also with the insurance health insurance we're trying to make them know that they can be treated most people fear the cost surrounding treatment of breast cancer and they start thinking oh i'm going to die but if you presented early you'll probably be treated and will be cured i can tell you there are many patients who get stigmatized at home because they have this and getting foul smelling ulcers on their chest wall and they get put in a room and and they don't get any treatment but when they come to hospital we can give them palliative care so there's hope there's always hope for palliative care but better yet you can come early and get cure as a this is Sylvia Newton come on Dr. Elizabeth Kulinyalogam and me told you cheat it I am Mazuizi Engila so there are things that you can prevent and there are things that are not preventable. You cannot prevent being a female, increasing age. So the higher, the older you grow, two thirds of your breast cancers will occur when you're 55, age 50s and above. So increasing age you can't change, your sex you can't change. But um, obesity, being overweight, um, regular exercise is encouraged, eating healthy, avoiding smoking, avoiding alcohol intake, if you're doing that, stop, um, avoiding a sedentary lifestyle because the fat cells in our body get converted to estrogen would put you at risk of getting breast cancer. So even after being treated for breast cancer, if you tend to then now get overweight or avoid a healthy lifestyle and exercise, you're putting yourself at risk of getting a recurrence of your breast cancer. So just living a healthy lifestyle, um, avoiding sedentary lifestyles, um, eating well, avoiding alcohol, avoiding, um, what would I say, cigarette smoking. Uh, for other, other things that you can prevent is hormone, hormone replacement therapy. So multiple combined contraceptives. You can try the different forms of contraceptives. Um, getting pregnant early, if that is something you can choose to. Um, having children, breastfeeding them for longer. Yeah, continuous breastfeeding for more than a year has shown that it can reduce your chances of getting breast cancer. And uh, if you do have a family history of breast cancer, um, if your mother, your sister, or your daughter got, got breast cancer, then doing self-breast examination monthly, going annually, once a year for clinical breast examinations. And then if you're above 40, getting an annual mammogram in a place where you can get the radiologist to read your mammography and give you the results or take it back to your medical doctor. Uh, or if you are less than 40 and you have a risk, familial risk, 
of getting breast cancer than doing an ultrasound. There are other avenues where we consider MRI, but those are specific.